Greetings Dragon Ball fans and welcome to another What If. In this series we will explore the possibility that that much touted and massive tension building time sink known as the spirit bomb is something more than the ineffectual if not dramatic episode ender that it is. In this What If it does what the label claims. What if the spirit bomb actually worked? We join our heroes again at the end of the battle with the Saiyans. The prince's tail has been removed courtesy of Yajirobe and the spirit bomb has been transferred to Krillin. Making up for his recent contribution, Yajirobe of course calls out to Krillin to throw the damn thing, alerting Vegeta to the attack. With Vegeta barely dodging out of its way, Gohan looks up at the looming ball of energy. With Goku's mental guidance, the boy succeeds in deflecting the ball of deadly energy. It rebounds and finds its target, striking Vegeta, vaporizing him. The Prince of the Saiyans is no more. He goes off to meet the recently departed Nappa in the next dimension. Gohan, however, looks on in shock. He can't help but feel that it was him who caused the death of that man. Sure, he was a bad man, but still. How would an oddly mature five or six year old boy handle such a thing? He was a bad man, so I did a bad thing to stop him? Yeah, okay. Despite Chi Chi's objections, Bulma still takes Krillin and Gohan with her to Namek. There are no books this time, however, as Gohan is a bit distant, and maybe kind of rude to his mum. He's a man now, right? Taking a life like that? Five weeks later, the trio arrive on Namek. They rescue Dende and are chased by Dodoria. With no Vegeta on the scene, Dodoria has no distraction, so they waste precious time hiding and waiting for the pink blob to move on. When eventually Dodoria gives up, they head on to meet with Bulma again. Frieza, of course, is furious that Dodoria lost their quarry. He'd better not fail again. Krillin then heads off to Guru's with Dende, while Gohan scouts out that lone ball far away from any significant power levels. He arrives to find a lone, yellow, alien-themed Frieza soldier standing triumphantly over some corpses holding a Dragon Ball. Gohan looks around and sees all the dead piccolos. His rage takes hold. He charges in as the alien's scouter screams at him. They fight, albeit briefly, and the yellow alien does not survive this encounter. As Gohan powers down and comes back to his senses, he sees that he is killed yet again. Sure, it was another bad person, but where does this end? A couple of wounded Namekians pick themselves up and thank Gohan profusely. He helps them up and they fly off together to Bulma's encampment with the massive Dragon Ball. Krillin, meanwhile, has arrived at Guru's tower with Dende and receives not only his potential unlock, but also the shiny one-star Dragon Ball. He heads back to base to find the two injured Namekians talking to Bulma while examining the dragon radar. Gohan is sitting by himself, staring off into space, seeming to ignore this conversation. They stow the two Dragon Balls and take Gohan to meet Guru as well. Bulma's not pleased about being left alone again, but, you know, she'll manage. When they reach Guru's tower, the group head in. Guru is pleased to meet the two survivors, and they tell Guru about how Gohan had rescued them. Guru then chooses to unlock Dende's potential so that he can heal the two Namekians, as Guru's own life force may not be able to handle the strain. Guru can also sense some of the conflict within Gohan, but also the determination. Gohan is hesitant to gain more power, given what he's done with what he already has, but Guru talks to him about this. He gets Gohan to reach out and sense the other powers on the planet, to feel their malice. This is something worth fighting. Guru also tells Gohan that his worry and feelings of guilt, the simple fact that he takes no pleasure in killing, all mean he is still fundamentally a good person. Finally relenting, Gohan's potential is unlocked as well. They arrive back at Bulma's hideout, but are met by Frieza's henchmen, Zarbon and Adoria. Neither having met up with and eventually being killed by Vegeta, they are still up and about, with no Ginyu Force in sight. Unfortunately, the recent potential unlocks have yet to peak, so neither of them are capable of beating either Zarbon or Dodoria. Dodoria, of course, has a score to settle and is keen to make an example of the wretches that made him look the fool in front of Lord Frieza. And what do you know, all three of them, plus two Dragon Balls to boot. He'll be back in Frieza's good graces in no time. With that, Dodoria lays into Krillin, 
beating him down mercilessly as Zarbon watches, amused. Watching Krillin take a beating, Gohan can feel his rage building. As Krillin hits the ground, dropping into unconsciousness, Gohan roars. He slams into Dodoria, knocking him away. Zarbon looks on in awe as his scouter goes haywire. How is that kid hiding so much power? Dropping all pretense, Zarbon is forced to transform. While initially still on the back foot, Gohan's rapidly calming mind drops him back below Zarbon's monstrous power, or monster power. Monster form power? Yeah. Terrified by this seemingly unstable power, Zarbon goes in hard, catching Gohan both emotionally and physically off guard. As he lifts Gohan's battered body by the neck, a bright light is seen streaking across the sky. What now? There's no one you doing. He'd know if Frieza had called in reinforcements. The streak fades as a similarly battered Dodoria returns from the mountain he'd finally extricated himself from. Zarbon turns his attention back to the soon-to-be corpse in front of him. He tells Dodoria to collect the two balls while he cleans up this mess. As Dodoria moves towards a terrified Bulma, a gust of orange-tinged wind passes them. Gohan is missing from Zarbon's hand, and the Dragon Balls have vanished as well. I think it's fair to say that Zarbon and Dodoria are no match for the recently arrived Goku. Their scouters may say a measly 5,000, but they just can't seem to touch him. After a bit of confusion, they are both blasted away into unconsciousness. Once again, Vegeta is not there to kill them. Goku gives Krillin and Gohan each a senzu. After the reunion, and some requisite mind reading, Goku, Krillin, Gohan, and Bulma confer about what to do next. They have two balls. The other five are clustered together near some really nasty power levels that King Kai is mentally shouting at Goku to avoid at all costs. Gohan suggests that they go and visit Guru with Goku and Bulma. Besides, they can't stay here in case those two wake up. Goku's sure they'll be out for a while, but ultimately agrees. Um, can the ship move? Yeah, let's, let's take everything with us. Flying low, they eventually arrive at Guru's tower in the ancient Namekian spaceship. Dende is happy to see that they are all well, as he felt them fading for a bit. Nail is quite excited to meet this immensely powerful but kind-hearted Goku. Goku is happy to see this not Piccolo. He's pretty strong. While Nail and the other Namekians investigate the ship, Dende leads them inside to meet Guru. Once Guru explains the process, Goku is more than happy to have his potential unlocked. This is, you know, really just his own power, after all. The room shakes violently as Goku's new power erupts. Nail pokes his head in in surprise. He was even more than that boy. Man, these Saiyans are incredible. As they discuss how to get the other five balls away from that terrible power, Bulma excuses herself and heads outside to the ship. When she comes back a few hours later, they are still no closer to a good plan. Bulma interrupts, saying that she has an idea. According to the scouter that she'd retrieved from Dodoria's unfortunate encounter with Goku, he was nearly twice as strong as that big power. He should be able to take that guy out, or at least distract him. She hands the scouter to Goku, who puts it on and looks around. He doesn't really know what he's looking at, other than the numbers. King Kai chimes in to say that Frieza can transform, so those numbers are not necessarily true. Those other forms contain the horrible depths of his true power. Goku relays the plan to draw Frieza away, while Krillin, Gohan, and hopefully Nail can then take care of the fodder soldiers. Then they can just bring the two balls that they have in and make their wish, and even if Frieza or his soldiers tries to interrupt, they won't be able to wish for anything anyway. King Kai is not at all happy, but it's not a terrible plan. They just need to keep Frieza thinking that he can beat them. And there's clearly no stopping Goku. He's chomping at the bit to fight this strong guy, his Saiyan blood boiling with excitement. Goku arrives above Frieza's ship to see the little tyrant dressing down Zarbon. Laying nearby is the freshly holed corpse of Dodoria. He does not tolerate repeated failure from his men. Zarbon looks up and points at Goku, fear clear in his face. Frieza laughs and floats up to meet this newcomer, who apparently laid waste to his best men. He first tries to recruit the men, thinking that he recognizes them, but not realizing that he's a Saiyan. Then, when Goku says he just wants to fight, Frieza sighs in exasperation and casually death beams the insolent interloper. To think he'd get his own hands dirty, that's what minions are for. When his death beam is nonchalantly deflected, he is taken completely off guard. 
No one has ever survived a death beam, let alone deflected one. It's not called a death beam for nothing. He discards his floating chair and faces off against Goku, who then just flies away, taunting Frieza to follow him. As Zarbon watches his lord disappear into the distance, he suddenly feels someone standing behind him. Being the consummate warrior that he is, Nail is not as lenient as Goku might have been. Zarbon, in his base form, vanishes in a flash of light. The other Frieza Force soldiers are cast into disarray as Gohan and Krillin join in. With the area and the ship cleared of soldiers, they bring Bulma and Dende in with the last two balls and enter the ship. Bulma's eyes are everywhere. All this amazing tech, healing chambers, space drives, weapons, computers. Her mind is racing over the possibilities. They quickly find the five Dragon Balls in Frieza's throne room and take them all outside. While Bulma fiddles around inside the ship, Purunga is summoned and after the Earthers marvel at the size of him, Nail asks Purunga to revive this Piccolo guy and to please bring him to them. As Piccolo appears right in front of them all, Frieza, now in his second, though slightly scuffed form, returns from battling Goku. He grabs Nail by the throat, halting any additional words, and immediately demands his immortality. When Purunga freezes and then vanishes in a burst of light, Frieza starts to laugh maniacally. He gleefully tosses Nail towards Piccolo, injuring them both quite badly. He then turns to face the slightly battered Goku. Now you should bow to the Lord of the Universe, the immortal Emperor Frieza. Goku, being of course Goku, just readies himself. Frieza charges in to attack Goku with renewed gusto and restored confidence. Until now, this strange warrior had somehow matched him blow for blow, but that was then. Now nothing will stand in his way. His unfolding potential unlock has so far allowed Goku to keep pace with Frieza. But how long will it keep doing so? As they clash, Piccolo looks on in awe as Dende comes over to heal them both. Piccolo sees the dead Dragon Balls and the tears in Dende's eyes. He sits there with the other two Namekians and mourns the loss of Guru. Frieza finds his second form to still be lacking against this man, so feeling brash in his new immortality, he goes straight to his final form, his true form. Unperturbed, Goku forges ahead, meeting but rapidly losing ground against Frieza's attacks. It seems Goku's potential unlock has finally capped out. Well then, time for a big gun, I suppose. Activating Kaioken. Activating Kaioken, Goku powers through Frieza's current barrage. Frieza, of course, responds by powering up a bit more. Just when he feels that he's gaining an edge, Goku calls in on Kaioken times three. Again, he is able to beat back the attacks. Just what are you? Frieza screams in frustration. Goku eventually ends up telling Frieza that he's a Saiyan, that he killed the evil Vegeta when they attacked Earth, and he's not about to let the same thing happen to these peaceful Namekians. No, it can't be. Not another Saiyan, he says staring at the bright red aura, in shock, anger, and maybe, if he's honest with himself, just a touch of fear. Not a... not a Super Saiyan. A Super what now? Goku asks, confused. Frieza pushes his power higher. Above him he forms a massive ball, a planet cracker. He laughs as he throws the ball down at the planet. He'll win this, no matter what. No Super Saiyan's gonna stop him. He stops laughing abruptly, however, when the ball stops moving. Boosting his Kaioken to times four, Goku pushes against the massive planet killer. Slowly, it starts to edge back up, away from the surface. Eventually calling out times five, he manages to push the ball up higher and throws the ball back up towards Frieza. There is a massive explosion, and Goku is slammed back into the ground by the ensuing shockwave. And with that, we end the first part of this what if. With Goku's potential unlock taking him higher than the fight with Captain Ginyu ever did, Frieza has found his own planet-killing attack thrown right back at him. Vegeta is of course long dead, and with only the vaguest of exclamations from Frieza hinting at its existence, this so-called Super Saiyan is nowhere in sight. Will they need one to bring about the end of this would-be galactic conqueror? Find out next time on Dragon Ball. What if the spirit bomb actually worked?